I'm Graham Murphy, a category manager here at Tech Rentals. Today we're just going to have a look at the PT878GC. It's an ultrasonic flow meter designed to measure air flows. Uh, usually used in um, compressed gas, compressed air measurement. Um, however, in this case, we're just going to set it up on this um, on our um, airflow rig, and I'll talk briefly about configuring it. Okay, this is the meter. Um, to use the meter, we've got to program it up. Now, in this instance, I'm going to be using a plastic pipe. Generally, you'll be using a copper pipe or a steel pipe because of the compressed air. I'm using, at the moment, a plastic pipe. Plastic pipes are easier with these meters, but anyway, we'll go into that a little later. Okay, firstly, I need to turn the meter on. I hit the on switch. It, um, you have to be careful um, when you're turning this on. This was just in sleep mode, so it came on instantly. But if it's right off, you push the meter button on button once and just leave it. It takes a little while for it to react. Now we need to program it up, so I've got to tell it. We hit this transducer button and it tells us what uh, this brings up with this programming page. Now, I happen to have clamp-on transducers. On the, written on the side of the transducer, there's, it's a 307. And um, we need to give also the pipe details. Uh, in the, this case, if I go um, enter on there with the pipe, it will jump to that panel. Now I'm using a plastic pipe and we happen to know we've got the dimensions of this 150 by 3 mil. It's not lined and the fluid we're putting through it to it, to it is air. Um, and the sound speed is 344.42, which is standard sound speed for air. Now the other point we've got to do over here, we come over to path. This, give, this is, we use, usually use single traverse with gas measurement. In this case, I'm using single traverse. This distance here is important, 20.08 millimeters. That's how far apart the two transducers need to be. Once we push OK, the instrument is set up. Now that 20.08 we need to remember. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So I push OK here and it will come up. Now, I've set this up to have two displays. You can have multiple displays on it. Um, if, you use, if you're in here, you can use the up and down arrow. And if you go enter on that, it brings up a menu that what you want to show on these displays, etc. So we don't, just don't worry about that at the moment. Anyway, we don't have a flow measurement going at the moment. I've got a little graph here, so this is where it will be displayed. Okay, then the, these are the transducers. Um, there's two sets. There's a 307 and a 308. One for a smaller size pipe, one for a larger size pipe. Just check the specs on the, the size that you need. Um, now, these, these pieces here, which look like um, pieces of medieval torture, are actually designed to hold the transducers on a pipe on opposite sides like this. So the uh, barrels point at each other. The 20.8 millimeter measurement means the fact that they're offset that much on either side of the pipe pointed at each other. Okay, um, these are the fixtures uh, for different size pipes. You have to figure out how they go together. Um, you screw this on there and that would be setting one side. That will fit into here, etc. It's just a matter of uh, fiddling around. It usually takes a while. And that's the set of fixtures. Um, in our case, these wouldn't fit. So we did the alternative and just use a um, couple of cable ties. So we'll go and now have a look at how we've set this up. Thanks. Okay, so we've mounted the transducers. We've mounted one this side, one this side. I've just simply used cable ties rather than those large fixtures because there isn't enough clearance under here to mount them. Otherwise, we would have used these fixtures. So normally, though, if you're using this for compressed air on a steel pipe, you're going to have to put deadening material on the pipe. Because we're using a plastic pipe, we don't need deadening material. Now, the deadening material is to stop the, the, these transducers, the signal ringing, and instead of going through the pipe, going around the pipe. Okay, the deadening material is also called damping material. It's um, it just semantics. Um, it's usually called that, but you'll need to put that on the pipe. As I say, there's one section here, one section up there, and one section down here. 
Okay, we've turned the rig on. We're now making a flow measurement. The standard measurement on this rig, our uh, default measurement is 9.4 metres per second, which this is showing at the moment. Uh, we use this for checking our, um, our uh, uh, airflow system. So that's, that's a pretty, pretty good. Um, now, one of the things you've got to do when you're using this on compressed air it, to check whether or not your dampening material here is working is that you've got to hit this diagnostic button here. And we wait, and this brings up the diagnostics. Now, one of the things it brings is up the sound speed. And you've got to make sure the sound speed here is about co correct. Now, that's 328, measuring 328 uh, metres per second. Uh, sound speed for air, 340 or so, that's close enough. Now, if you've got, if you're having issues with the deadening material, you'd require deadening material, or you're getting the signal ringing up and down the pipe, this will be at, you know, 1,600 or, or 500 or it'll be way out. So you've got to check this sound speed figure here to be confident the measurements are, are correct. So we come back and there's the meter sitting there. Great little measurement. Now, the issues are this is an actual velocity measurement. And if you've, uh, when you're measuring it, you've got to uh, know what the pressure is if you want a um, standardised measurement, which most people do, you have to know what the pressure and temperature of the air in the pipe is, the actual pressure and temperature in air, um, out of the air, and you have to know what you're going to standardise it to and do the calculations accordingly. We, we can do those calculations inside the metre, it's fairly simple to set up, I won't bother to go through it here, but um, you can see simple uh, measuring compressed airflow is relatively easy with this meter. It's a great little piece of gear. Okay, um, this is the um, air, just air, air velocity meter we've got at the end and we're reading 9.5, 9.6. Um, so all the measurements sort of correlate pretty well because it's, uh, it's not a particularly easy measurement to make. You've got to be very careful about uh, instrument placement.